So you want to jump into the crypto market, but don't know where to start. There are so many cryptos to choose from. What makes one better than the other? Should you just invest in Bitcoin and call it a day? While it's impossible to predict with 100% accuracy what the market will do, or how a particular cryptocurrency will perform, an understanding of some of the basics can help you out along the way. Understanding the economy of tokens, or tokenomics, can make or break a good investment decision. Welcome to Crypto Sketch 101. We're the number one go-to spot for all things crypto, and we're glad you've stopped by. If you love cryptos as much as we do, please give this video a like, and be sure to subscribe to our channel. In today's video, we're diving deep into crypto tokenomics. We'll examine everything you need to know about the key factors that determine the true value of a token, and even take a look at the two largest ones, Bitcoin and Ethereum. There's a lot to cover, so let's get into it. Tokenomics is the portmanteau of token and economics, and is the study of all the elements that give a token value. While there are many different factors in the tokenomics of a cryptocurrency, some of the most important ones include supply, demand, distribution, and allocation. Tokenomics are important when evaluating a project because tokens that have good tokenomics are much more likely to succeed in the long term because they incentivize buying and holding. Tokens with poor tokenomics are the opposite, they are doomed for failure because investors will rapidly sell them off at the first sign of trouble. Let's dive a little bit deeper into some of these factors, beginning with supply, demand, distribution, and allocation. The supply of a token is an essential element to consider while studying a crypto's tokenomics. There are three types of supply. Circulating, total, and maximum supply. The number of publicly issued tokens that are currently in circulation is referred to as the circulating supply. An increase in the circulating supply of a token could be taken as a good indication of active mining. With an increase in circulating supply, one could expect the value of the token to go up. On the flip side however, if too many tokens are released at once, or released too often, it could have a negative impact on the token's value. Total supply, on the other hand, is the number of tokens that are currently in circulation minus all tokens that have been burned. Burned tokens refers to tokens that are permanently removed from circulation. This is typically done by sending tokens to a wallet address that cannot be accessed, ever. And finally, maximum supply. Maximum supply refers to the total number of tokens that can ever be produced. While many cryptos such as Bitcoin and Cardano have a maximum supply, others, such as Ethereum, do not. Demand goes hand in hand with supply. If there is great demand for a token but only limited supply, the price of the token will rise. Vice versa, if there is little demand but great supply, the price will fall. There are other factors that impact demand, but more times than not, the greatest factor is supply. An understanding of a token's distribution and allocation is important as well. It's important to know if a token is pre-mined or fair launched. In the case of a pre-mined token launch, developers, founders, investors, institutions and select individuals are granted tokens before they are offered to the public. Pre-mined launches are very common, with most crypto projects practicing pre-mined launches. Investors should be cognizant however of whales or very large wallets that contain a significant percentage of the tokens. Whales can have a large impact on the price and stability of a token if they are able to buy and sell or pump and dump in large chunks. With a fair launch, there are no early allocations. Tokens are made available to everyone, including the general public, at once. A wide distribution to numerous participants are a good sign of a healthy project. There are several other important factors to consider as well. Here is a quick rundown on a few of them. Number 1. Market Capitalization Market capitalization, or market cap, can be used as a key indicator of token value and to determine the popularity and size of a token. It can be calculated by multiplying the current market price of a token by its circulating supply. A token with a high market cap but low circulating supply has potential to increase in value over time. Number 2. Deflationary versus Inflationary Tokens If a token has a maximum supply, it is considered to be deflationary. 
If it doesn't however, it is considered to be the opposite, or inflationary. As previously mentioned, Bitcoin has a maximum supply. There are only 21 million Bitcoins that can ever be mined and brought into circulation. Because of this, it is considered to be deflationary. Ethereum, on the other hand, has no maximum supply, and is therefore inflationary. Number 3, Return on Investment. Although there can be a few different reasons for investing, the most obvious of them all, is to make money. As such, it's important to know how much cash flow or income a token can generate just by holding it. And lastly, Future Outlook. It's important to understand whether or not a token will be able to address any future issues that may arise. If a project is not equipped to address future challenges, it may not be a good long-term investment. Take Ethereum for example, built on the proof-of-work consensus model, Ethereum's network can quickly become heavily congested with very slow transaction times. Understanding these issues, Ethereum has been working on a number of upgrades to alleviate network congestion and greatly increase speed. These upgrades address issues that could greatly impact Ethereum's long-term value. Knowing what you now know regarding tokenomics, let's take a look at the tokenomics of the two largest cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin and Ethereum. In order for new Bitcoin to enter into circulation, they must be mined. Since its launch in 2009, over 19 million Bitcoins of the 21 million available have been mined. To keep too many Bitcoins from entering into circulation at one time, the founder, or founders, of Bitcoin introduced what is known as the halving cycle. The halving cycle halves the reward, or number of Bitcoins that miners receive every 210,000 blocks, or roughly every four years. The halving cycle works as a deflationary tool, giving Bitcoin good long-term value. Because of the halving cycle, Bitcoin's circulating supply is mostly stable and predictable. Its price, on the other hand, has seen wild swings and as a result, its market cap has as well. With the current price of Bitcoin around 40,000, its market cap sits around $770 billion. At its record peak in November of 2021, its market cap was just over $1.2 trillion. Ether, the token of Ethereum, was first introduced in 2014. At that time, 7 million Ether were brought to the public through its initial coin offering. Since then, more and more Ether have been mined with over 120 million now in circulation. As you may recall, Ether is an inflationary token because there is no max supply. Like Bitcoin, it can have wild price swings. At a current market cap of around 370 billion, Ether is the second largest token, and at its height in November of 2021, it saw its market cap swell to over $570 billion. And that's all that we have for today's video. We hope you got a good understanding of tokenomics and the key factors to keep in mind when determining a token's true value. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and be sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for joining and we'll catch you in the next video.